Back in 2015, I offered this following hymn as a Christmas gift to my parishioners called the Midnight Psalm at Christmas, based on Psalm 96. Sing at night time, sing a song to the Lord, a new day dawning. Sing a song to the Lord. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. When we sing a song of salvation to God. Exultation, praise the child and king is in Incarnation with peace and harmony brings. He now comes to rule with justice and peace. With joyful praise we resound. When we sing a song of salvation to God. Shepherds keeping sing song to the Lord, the wise man seeking, sing a song to the Lord, when the song is praising the wonderful sound of the trumpets calling the King, we then sing a song of salvation to God, give glory Nations, sing a song to the Lord with gifts of gladness. Sing a song to the Lord. Let us then declare among all the peoples the Lord Messiah is King. When we sing a song of salvation to God. When we sing a song of salvation to God.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit on this beautiful Christmas Mass night where we celebrate this liturgy for all of our online friends and all who have joined us throughout the world. Please know that this Mass is being celebrated in my house chapel in our wonderful settings. We have had so many blessings this uh, Advent season from Bishop Hicks coming to our parishes, to our parish mission, to our posadas, to all of our other celebrations, our giving trees, our charity to the homebound, to the veterans home, and hopefully to you. Let us just give thanks for the Christmas gift of each other in God's presence in our life as we take a moment to call to mind our sins. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy animal, to one have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Santo Dios, Santo Poderoso, Santo Immortal, ten piedad de nosotros. Christe eleison, Christe eleison. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy animal, to one have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of true light, grant we pray that we who have known the mysteries of the light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoiced before you as the harvest, as people making merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that trampled in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They named him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. 
Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then shall all the trees of the forest exult. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. They shall exult before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all, and the training of us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people at his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus to the whole world that they should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have a child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over the flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the great Christmas gifts I received this year took place in St. Anne, Illinois, when I was traveling back and forth from Minooka to Mements to St. Anne's, back to a Minooka. There was a period there during the mission, eight days out of ten, I was going back and forth between university and Latin masses and all the other things that I was doing. I was given a call by our parish secretary to go visit one of our parishioners named Teresa Dion. Her daughter Mary had asked that I come and offer Teresa anointing of the sick while she was in hospice care. So I got into my car and we were doing all these projects. We had worked on this beautiful gymnasium over at St. Pat's and Laments as we have talked uh, that building about a quarter million dollars in renovations have taken place in the last month that we have done on less than a dime. It is just absolutely spectacular what the people in our community have done to turn this into a type of community center that can benefit a whole lot of people in Moments. So I was driving back to Moments and then called over to St. Anne to go visit Teresa when I realized that I was given the wrong address. In the middle of the country, in the middle of nowhere, I was told by my GPS 
to be located on a certain spot in the middle of farm country, right on top of a set of railroad tracks. I really thought my secretary wanted me to be run over by a train, the address that she gave me. And then I decided that I needed to find help to get me to the place where I needed to go. So I stopped at the nearest house by the train tracks and I encountered a man named Richard. Richard was living in this house and he had told me uh, that he really didn't know anybody in the area. Uh, he told me that some years ago he married, his wife left him, he was desolate, he was depressed. He didn't think the church would welcome him, that the church would love him. He said to me he felt alone. And we sat and talked for a little while and he shared his story with me. I ended up giving him a St. Anne's business card and I told him that he was always welcome in church, that God is a God of welcome, of hospitality, of love. I've been reinforcing this theme over and over again in my university courses. No matter who you are, God loves you. And all we have to do is live within God's parameters and God will bring us home. Our biggest obstacle to getting to heaven is not God, it's us. In fact, God so overextended God's self that God became incarnate, took on a human nature, took on a human will, suffered, died, did everything possible for our salvation. All we have to do is come back to God. So I gave Richard this opportunity to come back and I thought to myself, what a beautiful moment I had in the world of faith that we had an opportunity to save a soul, namely mine, because every time we do God's work, Every time we allow God to work through us to affect other people, look, I get it. Ten lepers are cured. One will come to say thank you. But our responsibility, our joy, is to go out and evangelize, to go out and save the lost sheep of Israel. So I left Richard's house, and it dawned on me that maybe the address was wrong, and if I went over to the next farmhouse, maybe I could find Teresa and her family. So I drove to the next farmhouse over, and lo and behold, there was Teresa and her daughter, and Teresa was winding down in her life on earth. Now, I came to find out when she died and her family came to visit me that she had a very interesting life, a very difficult life in some ways. Her parents died when in an auto accident when she was around 22, 23 years old. She was relegated and raising her family, her siblings, because there was no one home to take care of them, so she did it herself. She lived on a farm. She lived with her siblings on the farm. She took care of them the best she could. She ended up getting married, had children of her own, took care of her children, and was very invested in St. Anne's Church. During its heyday, when we had the academy, she was cleaning the church. She was part of the Council of Catholic Women. She was involved with funeral luncheons and all those things. The family told me that when she actually stayed by the oven, and watch the food cook, she was fine, but she had a tendency of multitasking, and the food might stay in the oven just a tad bit too long. I also was told that she loved to play cards with her family, her siblings, her kids. She liked to spend time with the people around her. She was a feisty one. She spoke her mind. Tell me about people that don't speak their mind. She was very determined in her manners, and she had her strengths and she had her weaknesses just like the rest of us. But what really affected me was I went into that house and I was talking to Teresa. She said to me that because of COVID, because she had been sick, because of all kinds of mitigating factors, she hadn't been inside the church for a few years. She had been so invested in the church during her heyday that at the end of her life, at 91 years old, she just wasn't able to make it to church. And she said to me, she said to me, Father, I don't think God loves me anymore because I have not been to church. In my mind, the reason why we celebrate Christmas, God never stops loving us. God knows what's in our hearts. And I would like to hope and pray for someone like Teresa, who has given her life to this community and to this faith, like so many individuals have, that I have encountered throughout my priesthood of 26 years. I look at a person like Teresa, I realize that there's contentment in my heart that this soul has taught me more about living the faith than I could have learned on my own. I learn from you, I really do. 
I learn how to be a good Christian by the Christian example that comes forth from others. That's the body of Christ. We all learn from each other. And what Teresa taught me is that she felt she had not done enough when in fact she had done what God asked her to do. She took care of her siblings. She took care of her kids. She didn't take much care of the oven, but she did take care of the people she was commissioned to serve. And that is a blessing. And that's what Christmas means to me. I offer these music videos. I will offer the family Christmas video that uh, I had produced some years ago, that I recorded some years ago, is my Christmas gift to you at the end of this Mass. Just please know that I am praying for your families. I am praying especially for people who have dedicated their lives to taking care of these communities in such a way that we don't realize how special we have it in life that so many people love us. Please know I love you. I care for you in God's name. That's what God has asked me to do. Please do the same for each other. Go home. Give your kids, your spouse, your significant other, mom and dad a hug. Tell them you love them. Spend time with them. And let's share this love of God always with the people that we meet. That is the best Christmas present at all of all. And that is our prayer today. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christmas gift of family, us being together united by the Spirit. Let us never take that for granted as we offer to the Lord our prayers and our petitions. For the leaders of the church who are supposed to bring people together as the family of God, guiding and leading them according to Christian charity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for moms and dads and kids and families who have really given their love to each other, that God may continue to bless them and be with them always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the benefactors of St. Anne's and St. Patrick's Church, especially those that we remember in our hearts, please know that God is with you and we ask God to stay with you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of St. Patrick's and St. Anne's Church, and for all who support them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that they may feel God's presence in the hands of their caregivers, especially today we remember those on our parish's sick list. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may be welcomed by God in his heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for my special intention, for the intentions of all those who supported my ministry in the ministry of the border town parishes, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Lord our God, continue to shine your light upon us so that we may be saved. Continue to walk with us in this journey through life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever, with humble spirit and contrite heart. May we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that, as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in the love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end. We acclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all those who holding on to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or they offered for themselves and for those who are dear to them. For the refreshment, redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night in which Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior from this world and is in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace. Command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, 
make it spiritual and acceptable, that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as you once were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, so those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all the saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to sing, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit, 
Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Anis Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Anis Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Anis Dei, Qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So on behalf of everyone at St. Patrick's and St. Anne's and all those that I serve, very much want to thank you for your kind generosity to the poor, the needy, and certainly our borderline parishes. I drone on about taking care of your churches. You know, these churches were established by those who have gone before us hundreds of years ago. What was it, 1850 at St. Anne's and 20 years later at St. Patrick's. A lot of people have maintained these beautiful facilities that you would never be able to build today because they are so beautiful. That's our gift from those who have gone before us. We certainly want a gift that those who come ahead of us will be able to enjoy these uh, beautiful uh, places of worship for future prayer opportunities. If you can support us, as always, please know we are so grateful. We've talked about book donations, brick donations, pew donations, building donations, paying off our parish debt at St. Patrick's Church. But what you have done to this point especially praying for each other. You know, uh, one of the things that I keep uh, talking about is the question of motivation. What's our motivation for doing what we do? And I have heard so many people, so many good souls in our community that say, unlike other places, these places show that they really do care, that they really do love. And I have to tell you, my gift, Artemio Ojeda, Emma Elvier, Kathy Griffiths, John Raymer, Kim Emerson, all those who work in our staff, all of our volunteers, whoever has come through our doors to help us out, what a blessing we have in our community. We do not say thank you enough. This is one thing I've learned in my priesthood. I've tried to tell you how much we thank you and we love you in God's name and we want to support you. Thank you for supporting us. May you all have a blessed Christmas season. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, I invite you to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed the great joy of his Son's saving birth, be announced to shepherds by the angel. Fill your minds with gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. May God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. In the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you 
and remain with you forever. Amen. This Mass is ended. Now go in peace. Thanks be to God.
Sing. 